What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to another episode of Ben Builds with Joe. We're back on the lag three, and we are pushing right along today, guys. We're going to get some detailed painting done, get on a few parts and pieces, and get this thing ready for next episode, where I'm hoping to do decals. Now, the overall paint scheme, I really dig these Baleo paints that I used. Everything looks pretty cool, but we do have to do some detail painting, like in the wheel wells and around other places. One of the areas we do have to go ahead and focus on here is right behind the exhaust stacks. Those have to be silver, so we have to make sure that both sides get painted silver. We also have to work on the markings. Now, that's going to be a little tricky. ICM decals are notorious for breaking apart in water and really not working very well. This here is the ICM decals. You can see that large black and red arrow. That's really cool. We've got some black right here. We've got the white numbers and, of course, the national markings. This is really, really neat looking, but I don't trust these. The white 70 is going to be hard enough, and I really don't want to have to try and focus on that black arrow. So instead, we're going to go ahead and make our own custom masks. Now, we do have red stars here and a separate decal sheet. We have some stencils as well, so we're going to use those. But I want to go ahead and paint on the arrow. So what I did is I went ahead and I scanned our decal sheet, and this is the scan right here. I made a couple of versions of it. So we can go ahead and use this as a template to cut out these arrows, and we're going to go ahead and paint those on using just regular red paint, nothing too fancy. We're going to backdate this to most likely the 1941, not the 1942 version that we have here in the decal sheet. So we're going to go plain red in terms of the arrow color. The way I'm planning on doing this is to take some Frisca paper, cut out that arrow, and then just position it here using our references and hope for the best. I know we have to go ahead and line them up on both sides, so that's going to be challenging for sure. We're going to go ahead and start out here first, though, by tracing out these arrows and get this all squared away. Then we have to go ahead and start painting. We have to mask off those little exhaust panels right behind the exhaust stubs. A lot to do there, so let's go ahead and just queue up a time lapse and push forward. See what we can do and just, well, get this thing one step closer to being finished. Let's go. everybody we are back and we have our lag with the painted on side panels there for the exhaust stubs those look really cool they're actually a different shape than they should be for the series of lag they should be more pointed but that's okay we'll let it slide now i'm going to go ahead and take our frisca paper and we're going to cut out just the very top of the backing hardly any pressure at all then we can go ahead and just pull off the top section of this arrow and then we can use that to stick it down to make adjustments and then once we get that more or less lined up we can pull off the bottom section and then, well, we'll be ready to rock and roll. Now, I'm going to have to use a couple of different sources to make sure this arrow is in more or less the right place. I'm not going to worry too much about it, though, because, well, I'm going to do my best to get this as aligned as I possibly can. So now we have this frisket paper stuck down on this side, and I think it looks pretty cool. 
We're going to go ahead and have to burnish down the edges just to be on the safe side because I don't want any paint kind of seeping through. Some might seep through anyway, but I'm going to really try not to have that happen. Frisket paper is not super tacky. It's just tacky enough to hopefully stay. So we're going to go ahead and just burnish that down and make any adjustments, push the air bubbles out as well so those don't leak. Now I have to do the other side though, so I'm going to do the exact same process. Take off that top layer, stick that down, and then adjust the bottom and burnish everything down. All right, we have the other side on now, and I've got them more or less lined up where I want them. So now we're going to have to go ahead and paint. Before we do that, though, I do want to go ahead and make sure I mask off the areas that I don't want any sort of paint on, like the wings, sides of the fuselage, the back part of the fuselage, the top, around the canopy, all that good stuff. I want that masked off so I can go ahead and just airbrush that red there on the sides. I think that should be perfect. Now we're going to have to, again, like I said, burnish down the edges just to make sure that is nice and solid. But I think we are looking ready for paint. Like I mentioned, we have some paper here. We've got some blue tack tape. I've covered over most of the areas that I think will be susceptible to overspray. And I think we're ready to go ahead and just hit that paint. I'm going to be using Vallejo. I'm going to thin it out with just a little bit of the airbrush thinner, drop a couple of drops of flow improver in there. And then we're just going to lay down a couple of coats and see how it stacks up. Let's queue up that time lapse, guys. Get this thing painted up. Fingers crossed this works out well. everybody so we have the red arrows on the side of the aircraft and i have to say i learned a couple of things here first and foremost i really probably should have laid down a base coat of white to even out the colors because i had to put way too many coats on it make sure that the red showed through i didn't have any color variations between the black the green and the silver so i think in the future if i do this again i'm probably going to go ahead and lay down a nice base coat of white some sort of light color that would have also made this a bit more vibrant it's a little on the darker side right now but that's okay. I did end up leaking a little bit here and there underneath the frisket paper, but I'm not surprised because I put down a lot of coats in order to get that coverage that I wanted. Again, I think that base coat of primer, like a white or something, would have really helped that. But oh well, what's done is done. So I think we're going to be able to come back, touch up, and I think we'll be decent enough. So I went ahead and I touched up most of the areas here and there. It wasn't a lot of touch up that was required, just a little bit of silver, a little bit of green, and a little bit of red. So we are done with that and we're moving right along. I'm not going to spend too much time on the arrow because, well, I don't think it really warrants that. It's going to be slightly weathered anyway. Get some chipping here and there on it and I think that should be decent enough. So I'm not really too concerned about being perfect. We've moved on now to masking off the wheel wells, which do need to be painted. Now the instructions say to use an aircraft gray. I'm not really sure what color gray that would be. I don't have aircraft gray, but I do have some Tamiya dark sea gray, which is really close to what it looks like on other people's pictures of their lags. So I'm going to go ahead and just use that. I think it should be fine. We'll take our dark sea gray. We'll mix it with a little bit of 70% isopropyl alcohol. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just airbrush all the parts, like the wheel wells, the inside of the gear bay doors, the gears themselves. We're going to get that all that nice gray color and we'll see how that goes. I think we might hit a bit of future too. So let's go ahead and wrap this thing up.
All right, everybody, we are back, and the lag three is looking pretty shiny. I went ahead and laid down a nice coat of future over all of the paint that I've done so far. I wanted to go ahead and make sure that's sealed in. We have a lot more to do, though, on the lag, but I just want to make sure that everything we've done today was nicely sealed. Now, next episode, I'm hoping to go ahead and try out the decals, get the white 78s on, as well as some of the national markings from the other decal sheet. And I think, well, we should be pretty decent. Now, for weathering, I'm not really sure how to handle this weathering on it yet. We're going to go ahead and just see what we can do. But I think we are good for right now. I'm going to let this all cure. So next episode, we're going to come on back and attack those decals. But until then, everybody, thank you so much for joining me. I know this is stretching out a little bit longer than I anticipated, but we're really moving here, and I think we should be done within maybe one or two more episodes. So until next time, you guys know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool, and we'll see you back here on the next episode of Ben Builds with Joe. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you soon. Thank you.